Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. I'm Sam Lindsay from Fortify. I do partnerships over here and we are joined by Ben McDonald, who's our senior applications engineer here at Fortify. He's been here for four years and Eric Yackley, business development manager from Hankel, who's been with them for um, five years. So um, if you have any questions during this webinar, go ahead and check type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we will address them at the end of the webinar. Also, we will be recording this webinar and we'll be putting it up on our website and our YouTube at the end of the day. And we will also send the link to all of you to share with your colleagues or to rewatch or whatever. Anyways, um, we will go ahead and get started. All right, thanks, Sam. So today we're gonna to be talking about ESD safe photopolymers and more specifically Fortify's ESD HD. But before we get into ESD, I wanna give you a quick background on Fortify. So Fortify, we're kind of at the center between additive manufacturing and polymer matrix composites. So what this really means is that we take all the benefits of additive manufacturing, like the scalability of DLP, the ability to resolve fine features and really print impressive geometries, we pair that with really functional materials. So these are materials that are fiber reinforced with functional additives that enable things that traditionally aren't done in DLP printing. So we do that with our Fortify platform. This is a platform that uses both hardware, software and materials in order to create a one-stop shop solution for printing functional parts. So, one of the key things, and this is specific to the ESD material, is our continuous kinetic mixing. So this is a module on our printer that enables us to homogeneously suspend fibers in whatever resin we're printing with in order to print functional parts, whether it's a hour long print or a day long print. So that means throughout the duration of your print, you're going to be printing with a homogeneous material so that you know your material properties are what they're spec to be, and there's no sort of sedimentation issues or headaches to worry about during the printing itself. So this is a little schematic of the CKM that we use. Just touch on this real quick, but essentially we add our resin to the machine and we mix this material. So we mix heat and meter throughout our reservoir in order to maintain that suspension of fiber, and we're continuously, continuously doing that so that we're able to maintain that fiber suspension. So the result of this Fortify printer with continuous kinetic mixing enables us to print this static dissipative material, which is a highly fiber loaded material that has some really nice properties for the ESD space. So ESD HD, this is our newest material to the Fortify portfolio. This is a fiber reinforced material that has the highest HDT on the market as far as ESD photopolymers go. Um, we use or we have a surface resistivity of 10 to the sixth ohms per square, which is key for the dissipative um, material class. And we'll jump into that a little further in a moment. And because we're on a DLP platform, we're able to print with a best in class resolution and surface finish that really enables some highly functional parts to be used in different ESD application spaces. So before we really jump into ESD, let's go, we'll do a quick overview of what is ESD. So ESD or electrostatic discharge, it's really a sudden transfer of current between two objects. So this happens when two objects get charged or a single object, an object gets charged with static, um, static energy and it comes into close proximity with another object of a different charge. The result of this is pretty often a spark, and it's really just the charge release from one object to another. But this can be seen in you know, different everyday areas like the shock you get from touching a doorknob. Um, a more extreme example would be a lightning bolt or a spark jumping to a PCB component. And then I like to show this chart because it really shows that resistivity, it's not a black and white topic, it's really a spectrum. So materials range from being conductive all the way up to being insulative or anti-static. Um, when we're talking about the dissipative or ESD materials, we're talking about a range of 10 to the fifth to 10 to the ninth ohms per square. So this is important because this range of materials enables a controlled flow of charge 
So we're able to prevent any sort of static buildup on materials or uncontrolled static charge, which leads to sparking and things like that. So static dissipation. In the ESD world, static dissipation is key to preventing ESD events or these sparking events that can cause damage and things like that. Um, like I said before, it really enables the controlled flow of charge from one object to another. So you're not creating those static sparks or static buildup, which can lead to a whole host of problems. So these range from you know, damaged circuit boards, which we have a few examples of here. ESD events can also trigger ignition of flammable vapors. So you can think of like a gas station, um, gas or flammable particulate, things like that. Um, on the flip side, static buildup can lead to an attraction of particles. So this can be seen in powder handling, powder handling applications where a static charge builds up and powder stops either stops moving or it collects in certain areas based on this static charge. And then it even can result in magnetic data damage. So there's certain devices that use magnetics to store data. These devices can be altered or destroyed, destroying data. So it really presents itself as a big problem. So why is this all important? Well, it's really, as everything goes, it's really time and money. So to the electronics industry alone, ESD, ESD damage can cause $5 billion a year and you know, damage, whether that's through component damage, circuit board damage, product damage, or repair cost. On the flip side, repairing all these components takes time. So it's really a costly problem for the electronics industry, but many more industries in the world as well. Um, ESD protection or ESD safety, that's really what our ESD HT material is geared for. And today, some of the forms of protection that are used are you know, wearables. So in a lot of manufacturing spaces, you'll see wrist straps or grounding cables, anti-static workstations, mats, things like that. Those are all designed to prevent static buildup on the person itself. The other way that ESD protect, protection presents itself is in components. So these are things like housings for end use parts, their fixtures during or fixtures for different parts, it's circuit board trays, circuit board pallets, things like that, and then even assembly aids. So it's really two forms of approach. It's a wearables approach, which is kind of your minimum, your minimum requirement for ESD safety. And then it's the components, which is that next level of ESD protection. So with the Fortify resin, we're really targeting applications with this material. We're really going after that second bucket of ESD safety, so the components themselves. So the first thing we'll talk about today is a solder reflow tray. So a solder reflow tray, it's used to fix your PCBs when they go through a solder reflow oven. So this is an environment that gets up to very high temperatures, 250 C plus, in order to melt solder paste to fix your components to a PCB board. Um, these trays, they can be designed for you know, a single PCB, they can be designed for a full array of PCBs, depending on what the demands are for a particular PCB board. And then they can span across all you know, application spaces of soldering. So that's solder reflow ovens, that's through hole, um, through, through hole mounting, surface mounting, whatever that might be. These trays, they're used for a whole host of applications. And some of the needs for these trays, like, they need to be able to maintain a really tight tolerance. So these trays are used to fixture these PCB, PCB boards at tight or at high temperatures. So these trays really need to be printed to a tight tolerance in order to properly fixture those boards. Um, on top of that, they need to be dissipative because these PCB boards have sensitive components on them. They need to be able to dissipate static buildup so that these boards don't get damaged during this manufacturing process. For our next application, we'll look at particularly surface mount nozzles. So these are pick and place nozzles. They're used to place components on PCB boards before that board might go through a reflow oven, for instance. Um, these nozzles, they use a really small through hole through the center in order to pull a vacuum on an individual component and actually place that component on a board itself. So these nozzles have a whole host of different needs outside of those reflow pallets. 
they need to have a high stiffness in order to properly pick up components and place them in the target area. If you don't have that stiffness, then you're gonna be losing the actual placement tolerance on the board itself. Besides that, they need to be able to be printed with a very fine resolution so that we can properly resolve that through hole. These through holes, they, they range in sizes, but it's pretty common to see less than a millimeter in diameter. So that's a fairly small feature. We really need the power of DLP to resolve that properly and resolve that fine feature. And again, these nozzles, they need to be dissipative. What this nozzle is doing, it's coming into contact with the various PCBs, creating, could be creating static buildup, but by being printed with this ESD HD material, they're dissipating that static charge so that during the full assembly process of a PCB board, you're not creating any sort of static spark. Finally, we'll come to our solder station assembly organizer. So this is common across tons of electrical engineers desks. These are important for organizing tools and parts needed during you know, hand soldering and things, things of that nature. But these, or these organizers are used to hold a variety of different tools. So things like hand tools, you might need pliers, tweezers, something like that, soldering tips, um, possibly even the soldering iron itself, a whole host of needs for these assembly organizers. So some of the key needs for this, again, tight tolerance. So all these components need to be fixtured in an exact location. In order, in order to do that, you need to be printing with a tight tolerance. So that's the power of DLP. They also need to be temperature resistant because when you're placing those hot solder tips, the solder iron itself in this assembly organizer, you need to make sure that you're not going to destroy this organizer with temperature. So that's really the power of ESDHT coming into play there. And finally, you need to be able to prevent that static buildup again, because all these tools are going to be moving, moving around, coming into contact with various objects, generating potential static buildup. So you need to be able to dissipate that buildup in order to prevent that spark from happening and damaging the circuit board that you might be working on. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Eric to talk a little about. Uh, the Henkel resin portfolio. Great, thanks for having me uh, this morning. Uh, I'm here to uh, do an overview of uh, Loctite's portfolio in photopolymer materials and how we interface with Fortify as a building block to their uh, larger composite technology, which you've already seen a part of now. Uh, so just as a overview, uh, and some philosophy behind what Loctite 3D is doing in the market. Um, primarily, our portfolio is DLP materials, uh, which overlaps, of course, what Fortify is doing. Uh, we have made a range of rigid uh, elastomeric and also some uh, medical grade materials. And for us, we develop some core resin technologies uh, in all these spaces, which we then use uh, as a uh, base to do custom formulations for uh, print partners such as Fortify. Uh, we also have one of Fortify's uh, machines in our R&D center, which is out on the West Coast in California, uh, which we view as key with any partner that we have in terms of how we work collaboratively to put our materials uh, on a platform and make sure that when uh, one of our materials is printed on a partner uh, printer platform. It will meet the specifications that we lay out uh, on our TDSs. So that would apply for our standard market products uh, like you see here. Um, and then uh, we are also working, of course, on the custom versions where we're trying to hit specific metrics that uh, companies like Fortify would lay out uh, based on their fiber fill and what type of end product they're doing. Um, so just to quickly walk through in the, uh, we call it photoplastic. This is our rigid area. Um, we have just one prototyping material. To be honest, we haven't spent too much time on uh, materials like that. We've mostly been focused on more functional materials. Um, and we categorize them by HDT, as you'll probably see in here. So we have materials that range from an HDT of 50 
uh, all the way up to an HDT of 280, which is our uh, 3955 um, FST material. And we're primarily trying to optimize for toughness all along that uh, HDT range. In the elastomers, um, we have two prototyping type products, 8195 and 5015, as well as uh, two uh, more end use type elastomers, which are newer for us, um, 402 and 475, which are uh, just the two different Shore A values. And then we have a separated uh, section where we have our medical resins. Today we have two uh, rigids. Um, there's also some elastomers coming uh, in that section uh, that you'll see later this year, um, but we uh, handle our medical materials differently, all based on indication for use. And then outside of our DLP, uh, we also put together a material that was really aligned to LCD screen uh, type printers, and then also a material uh, for VAT SLA. So from this basic arrangement, then uh, we are modifying these materials uh, and customizing them for partners. So uh, Ben has already walked us through their ESD material. I also wanted to show another example uh, where we work collaboratively with Fortify on a material that goes into uh, their tooling and molding material, which you've probably seen out there. Uh, this is actually a case study on uh, our website and that I'm sure you can find at Fortify as well, uh, just to show a real life use case where uh, they used our combination material with their fill to make molds that went into face mask production. And so with that, I will hand it back to Ben. All right, thanks, Eric. So there we have it to kind of wrap things up here, do a quick recap, um, you know, $5 billion per year in ESD related damages. That's a huge number. And that's just the electronics industry alone. A lot of that damage probably can be prevented by proper safety measures that you could implement with this ESD HT material. Uh, like we said, it has a heat deflection temperature of 284 C, which is the highest you'll get with a photopolymer right now. And we pair that with a best in class resolution and surface finish in order to print really complex, highly defined parts that are super functional. Um, it's really ideal for housings, trays, fixtures, and anything else that you might have ESD related needs with. And just to recap again, this ESD HD material is powered by Henkel. So with that, I'd like to call out our pilot program. So. Fortify, we're starting up a pilot program for ESD HT where we're both going to be printing sample parts that you can go onto our website and purchase. Uh, we'll be printing tensile bars, resistivity coupons, and a feature test geometry. We're pairing that with a one off kind of custom pilot program where we're going to be working hand in hand with you, taking a custom geometry that will help solve whatever problem you might have, whether that's a reflow tray, some sort of housing. And we'll go through, we'll review designs, go ahead and print that in our material and send you the printed parts so that you can functionally use these parts, devices, whatever they might be on your own. And with that, I think we're ready to open up to questions. Um, so thank you everyone. Thanks guys. Okay, so I know we got into this a little bit, but maybe Ben, you could dive into a little bit more detail. Can you explain what sets the ESD safe material apart that we have versus other ESD materials on the, the market today for 3D printing? Sure, yeah, I mean, it's really pretty simple. It's the heat deflection temperature of our material. So being up at 284C, that is by far the highest in class right now. So that really enables applications that these other materials can't go after such as the reflow market. Um, but yeah, anything with high temperature requirements and a dissipative need, that's really well suited for our material. Awesome, okay. Um, does this material have good chemical resistance to flux chemistries used in soldering? 
Yeah, so I think that's something that there's no indication that it wouldn't have good chemical resistance. Resistance. Um, this material itself is fairly chemically stable, but this these specific flux chemistries we have not tested to date. So that'll definitely be something for us to do going forward. But I would say I would expect it to have good chemical resistance. Thank you. Okay. Um, what type of print resolution can be achieved while still maintaining ESD properties? Sure. So for this specific material, um, we're able to achieve the standard resolution that we're hitting with any of our printers. So that's going to be a native resolution of 75 micron with a little bit of, we'll call it um, pixel shifting work that we do to get down to 37 and a half micron resolution. Um, on top of that, I would say, as far as overall features, anything in the, we'll call it 300 micron range, we're able to resolve that. So, I mean, we can resolve some pretty, pretty fine stuff and it's not really limited by the material, more so the printer itself. Okay. A couple more questions coming in. Um, does the material have to be water resistant? Yeah, so I would say the material, it, it is water resistant itself. Um, we we have not done any formal testing, but we've done informal testing with some, some water exposure and there's really no absorption there. Um, and then I'll just tack on the second one as well. Uh, warp issues during the printing or curing process. Um, there's no, I wouldn't call them warp issues. There is some minor shrinkage that happens as a result of the DLP process itself as you're, you know, cross-linking all those uh, monomers into polymers, um, you're gonna have a little bit of shrinkage, but it's very minimal for this material itself. And that's one thing that the, the fibers help with uh, preventing that shrinkage. Um, but as far as warping issues, I would say that we really don't have any warp issues. We're able to get some very flat parts once they, once they come through our curing process, which from what I've heard is very important for the reflow market in particular. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, this is a good question. Are you just offering um, high temperature ESD parts or selling the machines with this new material? Yeah, so Fortify, we are a machine OEM. So our ultimate goal is to sell printers. Um, that is something that's gonna that goes along with this new material is new application space that we can sell printers into. So our overall goal is to sell machines, but we're also able to sell parts if that's something that you're looking for. If you can't either justify the printer or you don't have the regular need to be printing these parts, we can certainly either print parts here as part of our pilot program, or we can link you up with a contract manufacturer who has one of our machines to print these parts. So if someone has like a particular geometry that they want to get printed in this material, should they just reach out to us and then we could take it from there? Yeah, that would be the best approach. Reach out to us, send us the geometry. We'll be able to review it and figure out what, what the best path for it is, whether it's engaging on that pilot program or whatnot. Okay. Um, I think this is good. I think we're done with questions. Um, so what I'll go ahead and do is uh, we'll get this recording up on our website today. Um, and then I'll be emailing everyone here the link to the recording as well as a way to get in touch with um, either Fortify and or Hankel. So thanks everyone for joining and thanks Ben and Eric for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. All right, see ya.